Howdy, everyone. It's me once again, the one and only Killer Rodan. And today, I have a horror film to review for you folks. Yes, of course. It's a rather low-budget film, and it's quite old. When it comes to the horror genre, that's what I'm usually reviewing anyway. Old horror films from the past. Yes, sir. So anyway, the title of this film is a vampire-type movie, and it's called... Twins of Evil. Yep. That's the movie I'm going to be talking about because why the hell not, I guess. So I just figured I would just do this because I reviewed plenty of vampire themed films before and I thought I would just do it again because why the hell not. Uh, when it comes to. When it comes to horror films, the one of my favorite genres is the vampire themed stuff anyway. So I just figured I would do this. I used that as a good reason to do so. But yeah, there you go. But anyway, of course, as usual, I do have the top of the plot, so yeah, let's just dive right into this, shall we? Here we go. Anyway, as you can guess, there's going to be something in the lines of twins, of course. And this movie does center around the fact that this, have, this does have a brief lesbian type content going on here. And just to be clear, the film is not trying to say anything negative about lesbianism or anything like that. It just happens to be in this kind of a movie, which does make sense considering the fact that the LGBT community is often considered a taboo, and vampires are considered to be a taboo. And watching horror movies is also considered a taboo as well. So yeah, just keep that in mind. So if anything, it's like a taste of the forbidden food, so to speak. And of course, throughout the entire film, uh, to no surprise like to anyone, this movie will obviously try to find different ways to show, you know, some skin. Which, of course, is pretty acceptable in, the, in these types of movies because when it comes to horror films, they use any kind of way to actually do this. As long as it goes within the context of the story, I don't really see a problem with it, really. But, I'm just putting it out. Of course, the women here are going to be dressed up in rather nice outfits and whatnot. And some, of course, saw some cleavage or whatever. But anyway. And also, another thing you might expect from is trying to have a, like a religious type figure, of course. A religious type thing that's being led by this individual that we hunt all women that's suspected of real witchcraft, of course. Killing a number of innocent victims, of course, there was also these women who we, of course, have a, to be a part of the story somehow. And yes, of course, suspicions will arise, obviously, so as the story itself continues to get more wild and more crazy, of course. Taking place in the 19th century middle of Europe, yeah, there's this orphan teenager twins that go to live with their uncle who heads the Brotherhood, this pretty much venture anti group that's attempting to pretty much take out the vampirism. But the methods are random and misplaced, and of course, the only result is uh, terrorizing the population, so to speak. But of course, like you might expect, there is a real threat. There, uh, I guess a worse threat in a lot of ways. And it's with this ominous count, and although the twins seem uh, to be a certain way to be identical, but let's just say some things will occur. And yeah. I'm not, I'm not trying to give away too much, folks, th of the story, but let's just say things do become rather shaky, rather crazy in a lot of ways. But then again, it's a horror film, of course, it's going to happen in a, in a lot of ways. The, this film, as you can uh, as you can get from the, the title, concerns these two these sisters who have been recently adopted and are sent to live with their guardian and uncle. So, yeah, let's just say that things do continue to get more crazy. And yes, having religion be part of a horror film, especially in vampire movies, is actually nothing new. 
why this film doesn't really do anything that much different from what we've seen already from this genre. But it's something I guess you can enjoy as a whole. The film was actually pretty good, folks. Even though it does feel like the formula has been... Okay, Ben Dale done that kind of attitude. But it, it's, it's a cute and it's actually pretty well done. This was actually probably part of a... Of a trilogy that's loosely tied together. By which I mean, it has something to do with vampires, something to do with, with these attractive women, and something sort of connected with the lesbian stuff, kind of, sort of. But, I can say that this film does focus on the atmosphere in a lot of ways, which of course is highly appreciative, of course. So, why this film won't be for everybody, I definitely can say it's a good one, of course. It does contain a lot of elements, of course, I did like from the Hammer Company. The Hammer Company had produced a lot of these films in the past. There was this vampire type thing that comes along, and of course there was the rich hunts, devil worshipping, all this kinds of stuff presented in a Hammer film. And of course there's going to be a creepy yet beautifully done goth atmosphere all mushed together in one way. So I did like how they were trying to do the, the story and the characters. The makeup effects are, the, the makeup is actually quite well done, despite the fact that the budget of this film is actually not very high, but hey, it counts for something, I suppose. But anyway, this film definitely gets a recommendation from me because it's actually a pretty good film. Yeah, I know the production value isn't extremely high, but they had to do with what they had at the time. Mind you, this was done before CGI. The acting was pretty good, of course, for the most part, and I like what they're doing here. And did give you a sense of place, and that's a good thing there. Anyway, I'll give this film an overall rating of a 7.5 out of 10. It's a 7.5 out of 10 for me. And as always, thanks for watching, and take care. Until next time, see ya. Oh yeah.